Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki, and you are looking at a, uh, this is a scene from the release that came out today. It's February 3rd of 2024, and um, we're looking at a scene that is not an animated map. It's got animated effects, like these little moats and and that a lightning that you saw playing in the background and, you know, these rolling clouds but uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you uh, a bunch of tools that, you know, many of you know about many of these tools. Some might be new to you, but I'm just going to show you how to make maps that are alive like this and feel like they've got animated effects. So let's jump into a couple more examples. Here's the same scene with a modified background. I'm going to show you how I did this and how you can take a scene like this and modify the background. But you can see all of these animated components. And this also has some of these little moats flying around. And there's more than one way to make a lot of these effects. You can see this scene here, this entrance to a temple. We've got a different sort of cloud effect. And so I'm gonna give you also multiple options. And surprisingly, a lot of this stuff is pretty free. You can do most of this in Foundry just with free assets and free modules. You can even like animate trees that are not, they don't normally come animated. And I've actually created a bunch of macros for you guys to actually use. They're just free in my nuts and bolts. And I'll show you all the different tools here that we're using. And this should give you a pretty good start on making your own sort of living maps like this. Okay, so welcome to the animation lab. This is just a scene with a bunch of the components that made up everything that you just saw. So all of the maps that you just saw involved components like these. So I'm gonna walk you through all of these, all of the modules that could come into play if you wanna do this kind of animation. And uh, we'll just kind of get get cracking. So as far as the, the modules that I'm using here, first of all, you, you may or may not be aware, there's a ton of animated asset modules out there. This isn't even all of them, I think, but these are the ones that I like and I use these and I've got some samples here in this scene, but JB2A has a free uh, module for their animated assets. Their Patreon is stupendous and does some really cool stuff. Jinker is another artist in the community, has Jinker's animated art pack, uh, which I use a lot of. Jack Kerouac's animated spell effects, also very, very helpful if you want to make a lot of these types of animated maps. Uh, and then I duplicated animated spell effects. Uh, you also want to check out some of the effects modules. Tile scroll is from Ripper. By the way, these are all free. Uh, tile scroll also free. Token magic effects. That's for creating effects on tiles, tokens, uh, drawings, and other things. FX master for creating the weather effects. And then I've just included some convenient macros and presets. If you use the mass edit uh, module, which I suggest down here, it comes with the a presets feature, which I did in my last video. And I've just included a bunch of free ones. The nuts and bolts module is free. Sometimes it calls out premium assets. So if you think it doesn't work, it's probably because it's trying to call a premium asset, but you just need to change the, the, the asset reference. I'll show you how to do that, but the module or the macros themselves and the presets um, are all uh, pretty helpful. And then you also have some modules for designing scenes, some more utility modules. So mass edit on the top of the list. Tile sort is also by Ripper. If you're going to use a bunch of elements in a map, tile sort just helps you get to all the different elements, even though they might be layering on top of each other. Levels, of course, also by Ripper, also free. That's if you want to create overhead in what I'll show is underfoot effects. And then, of course, Monk's Active Tiles, if you want anything to be smart, as they say. So let me take you on a little bit of tour here of the stuff that I think that you're going to want. First of all, you're going to want a black square. Uh, I know it sounds simple. This is a black square. It's like one pixel, but this just happens to be resized to, uh, to this size. But it's a super simple asset. It's in my uh, premium module, but it's easy to make a black square. You also will want non-tileable textures. Um, those are just easier to find. These are two examples of non-tileable textures, meaning if I stacked one of these on top of the other one, you would be able to see a seam, right? So there, there's a seam there. They're not tileable. Same with this 
this texture here. And I'm going to show you how you're going to use non-tileable textures in some flexible ways. You also want, if you can find them, tileable textures. Tileable textures you can actually make in things like Midjourney, just using the dash dash tile um, modifier. And that will make a, you know, a tileable texture. So let me show you what these look like next to each other. You notice there's no seam. So that means they're they're tileable. That's important if you want to zoom in and use some of these things as backgrounds, do some other stuff with them. It's also important if you want them to scroll. So if you want clouds rolling by, you're going to need a tileable cloud texture like this. You can see there's no seam as it's rolling by. And this is actually tileable in both directions. So we could change this. This is using tile scroll by Ripper. We could change the direction to the other direction. And oh, we have a little bit of a, a line there, but uh, you can see it's uh, this was something that was created in mid journey and you can create something that is like this. This is also a tileable texture. Um, this came from my endless road set comes from my endless road set. It's in my premium module, but it's just clouds and they sit like an overhead and you can, um, they just bring instant sort of, uh, animation to a, a scene. And then you've got your animated assets. And this is just a few of them. There's so many, there's probably hundreds. And these are from different artists, right? So if I go to my tile control, this little rat running around, this is from Jinker's uh, module. It says uh, J-A-A-M-O-D is the module in the module list, but that's Jinker's module. And I use this to have a little rat running around scenes. Uh, there's a macro in my nuts and bolts that just you apply this to a uh, a tile and the little rat will run around your scenes. It's also got this hummingbird. I use the similar one. I use that uh, for, for mine as well. Uh, this one is just a bunch of flies buzzing around. Great um, for if you want to just put them in a corner of a, of a scene or put them in an outhouse, things like that. These are all from Jinker, by the way. I believe this fireplace is from Jinker or this, the campfire. Yep. Now this one's from animated spell effects, which I believe is the Jack Kerouac animated spell effects. And this just shows you like a, just really cool stuff and you can resize these things. But if you notice in that last scene, I'll show you how I do it. You can have lightning flash, right? And if you make it smart with Monk's Active Tiles, then you can have it flash only certain times, right? When it gets activated and you can have it play a, you know, distant thunder sound along with it. Other things from Jack Kerouac, this uh, fire, this is uh, one of the assets I used in the, uh, the lava scene that you saw earlier. And then you've got some more stuff from Jinker. You got really interesting things like these smoke trails and beams, right? More stuff from animated spell, effect, spell effects, more from Jinker. If you want to make a wagon that looks like its wheels are turning. This is another one from Jinker. I mean, how, how many times are you going to use this? I mean, this is perfect. This is sort of a universally usable uh, torch, right? So you can put it into static scenes and give them a little bit of life. Other things that you're going to want is helpful macros in my nuts and bolts. There's tons of macros in there. Again, some of them call out uh, premium assets. You're just going to have to like open them up and see which ones do, but it's easy enough to change them. So I'll, I'll give you an example, this random uh, overlay terrain. So this is a grass overlay. You can open it up, expand it out a little bit, and you'll see that it's calling out tiles that are from my premium pack, right? And there's a lot of different tiles that it randomizes. You can just replace these with tiles that you make, right? These are just tileable uh, tiles for grass and, and other kinds of terrain. You just need to get my macro and then replace those with the stuff that you make and, the, and they'll work just fine. Uh, floating objects, right? Uh, token magic effects, um, mass edit. So this is where if you've got an effect like this, this is, this has got a, a token magic effects, rotating fog applied to it. If I click on mass edit, I open this up, I can now change the parameters of this, right? So if I didn't want a, a red fog, but I wanted a blue fog, I can do that super easily. I can even change it's like alpha, right? I can change um, the speed at which it's rotating. I can even change the scale, right? So I can zoom in on it. And that's what makes this really powerful is, you know, you can zoom in, zoom out, 
and you see how you have this like crease here because it's not tileable well because you can zoom in on it you can zoom in past the crease so you can take things that aren't even tileable and you can have them serve as backgrounds right and i can blow this up to the size of an entire scene so tons of control that you get over this including making it spin faster or slower right and that's super helpful really subtle spin might also get your players sick but it's great when you're designing scenes and you don't want it to be too obvious that it's, that there's motion in the background. And I just put this down here as a comparison tile scroll will also rotate textures, but you can see it leaves the scene. There's no way to zoom with tile scroll. So that's why the token magic effects with the mass edit um, to, to edit that effect is helpful. And you can find that uh, rotating fog, um, in my macros and then you also have these mass edit presets so if you have mass edit installed and you have my nuts and bolts installed you open up presets you can search for like rotating and you can see down here this external compendium that's where you can find my rotating fog i happen to have it already loaded in my world which would be show up here but if you have it uh, nuts and bolts installed and active then mass edit will go and look for special compendiums like mine in a little surface rotating fog for you on top of a bunch of other stuff and these are all free right so the textures may not be but the the functionality is so you can you can check them out if you have trees see this tree is slowly swaying in the wind right it's just a static tile but i've got um you know different uh levels of you know blowing trees that you can apply again just look under my macros grab uh, select that that overhead tile and execute the macro and you can make the tree sway other things are fx master and fx master if you're not aware has the ability to mask so we're usually used to using fx master as an entire scene um, effect but uh, a lot of you don't know that you can actually restrict it to a mask so if i turn the mask off you can see the effect is everywhere if i turn it on then that mask is restricted to anything that's got this toggled on see so if i hover it says mask uh, mask fx master particle effects if i turn that on this becomes a mask and it'll just show it within this area it's great if you want to have these effects just you know like um bubbles in, you know bubbling up in a in a bog or something like that and then the last piece is just foundry's you know core lighting right this is a light that's just part of foundry core lighting i've got different things attached to it or uh, different settings on it but it's just a ghostly light with a certain speed and density and certain settings here on the advanced options page and it gives you the ability to make liquids look animated i also have of course these walls if you don't know that you can block walls um, or block lighting with these walls and you can just block lighting everything else you can see through it walk through it things like that so you can shape your lights any way that you want using walls and with that that's really a ton of things that we can play with and those are really what drove the the scenes that you just saw so let's jump into one of those scenes and i'll walk you through some of it because there's some techniques that you're going to want to know along the way okay so with the lava version of the gauntlet they're both kind of the same thing but you'll notice you have all these tiles up here and these are new tiles oops let me switch to my overhead these are new tiles with my latest release and these are tiles that you can just assemble uh scenes with right and so this whole like gauntlet of you know stone and and elevation changes and stuff like that are just a bunch of tiles well they're all set as overhead tiles and they're all set in fact as overhead tiles starting at level zero and going to nine okay and you just notice my my settings here they're always visible right and so that's meant to be what your players walk on so how do i put these things underneath it well, if you don't know this, if you have levels installed and you go to your scene configuration, I think it's levels that does this. It might be better roofs, but I think it's levels. You go to the basic tab. You can set your background elevation to something other than zero. So I put mine to negative 100. What that means is that all of these things are really overhead tiles. And the only background tile is anything I push, put in the background, it pushes it to negative 100. So that means that I can place all of my background tiles and effects, including all of these, you know, little 
you know, animated tiles. I can hide them underneath rocks and things like that. And then I can create this really cool effect where these little, little fire bursts are just happening here and there. Right. I also have my lights, right? So all of these little special animated lights, they're all deployed around here. And that just gives the lava this, the feeling like it's kind of blooming, right? So it's sort of glowing. Um, and it gives a sense of movement, even though it's just an illusion. And I'll just show you my, uh, my settings here in case you're trying to replicate it. I just pause it on this part of the video, right? And it really makes a difference when you adjust contrast and uh, luminosity and attenuation. You can see how much it exposes or doesn't, or the, the underlying artwork. Now, with another thing that you don't necessarily know just by looking at this is this tile in the back. I'll just kind of move it around here. You see it's all black. That is that black tile, that black square I showed you before, right? It's just a simple black square stretched to the edges of the scene. And I did mention fit tile to scene macro. This is a nuts and bolts, something Ripper made. And it just takes a square and it sizes it to the, to the dimensions of your scene. You can drag it around. But so how do we then see this artwork? Well, that is a token magic effects application, right? So if I click in my mass edit editor, I see that there's actually two token magic effects filters applied to that, that black square. One is base terrain and the other one is tint. So let's open base terrain and see what we're working with. Okay. First of all, the image path is the subterranean lava. I'll show you what that looks like, right? It's just a, it's a, simple non-tileable and it's important uh, uh tile right and while if it was tileable i could still use it if it's not tileable it would make that crease throughout the um well actually it would be just stretched out you wouldn't even be able to use it right um if i just applied it as a tile but because i apply it as an overlay i have these options for it to repeat to discard in this case i have it maintaining its as aspect ratio and maintaining its scale so no matter what the dimensions of the underlying tile are the artwork still shows up properly all i have to do is just scale enough that i don't see the edges right so if i scale out to one I'll just show you, see if we can find an edge in here. Yeah, here's an edge right here, right? So it doesn't work. You can see the edges, but if I just start to scale out, it does. And I also have the ability to move it around. So if I want certain artwork to show up in a certain place, I can just change the translation. You notice that crease that went by, right? So I might want to zoom out more but you can change where the artwork shows up. So it's just a much more flexible way of changing your backgrounds and your backgrounds are where you're going to find a lot of opportunity to create these, these animations. So another thing you can do is you can colorize it. So if I go into this and I want to turn it blue, I hit colorize, it'll turn the whole thing and colorize the whole thing blue. And that's how I get the other scene that you saw earlier. Right. This scene is using the exact same background, but it's actually colorized blue. And that's what gives me this new tint. You apply some blue lights on top of it, like I just showed you, and you've transformed the whole scene, right? I add a little bit of FX master, um, you know, motes. The other ones were kind of red. These are blue and you're creating like, you know, foreground background animation and context. And it's really, really cool. Something that I added to this scene, just to show you what's, what's inside of it. If I go to, um, my tile sort tool, I'm looking at everything on the foreground now, and you can see all the skeletons and other things that are deployed in the scene. And then you see clouds, right? So I've built it as a, as a foreground tile. If I click it open, you can see that it's at negative one, negative one. So it's just under the, the feet of the players, right? Um, show everyone below. You can just kind of copy these if you want to recreate it. Uh, the animation is using tile scroll to scroll it at 0.1 speed, right? And the direction is one, 180. So it's going from left to right. And then I also have the tile opacity dropped and I've tinted the color to blue. And that all gives me this, these rolling clouds, right? 
and they roll in one direction. And as they go under the lights, they get lit up, right? And so this is how you start to stack some of these effects together and they, they look really, really good. Okay, now I'm going to show you this part. So remember I was walking and then all of a sudden you see this, this lightning flash, right? And you hear the thunder roll in the background. It's a cool effect, right? But I didn't want that lightning to flash all the time. So what that lightning actually is, is a tile, right? It's from Kerouac's uh, animated spell effects. I'll show you what it looks like here, right? It's that tile. But you can see it just keeps flashing, right? So you use Monk's Active Tiles to change its behavior there. And that means that, you know, it's only going to flash a certain times. So let me show you how I set that up. First of all, levels-wise, uh, it's a background tile. It's not an overhead tile. So it's sitting against the background with everything else. Uh, from a basic perspective, I just made it super large. Nothing special on the animation side, but it's the triggers where we added some things. So what I said was anyone, any token, traveling through, moving through the uh, the tile, um, must have sight to be able to trigger it. I think that's on by default. Uh, it will trigger this tile. Notice I have a cooldown on it because I don't want every token all the time to keep triggering the tile. I just want a cooldown of eight seconds. The actions are it's going to play this sound of distant thunder. It's a sound in my premium pack. It's going to then start the animation for this tile. Then it's going to wait for one second and it's going to stop that animation. And then it's going to reset the an animation. And that is a complete cycle. And then it'll hit an eight second cooldown. And with that, it's, and then I just made three of those tiles, right? So there's one here. I reorientated it, put another one over here. And then I changed its orientation again and put a third one on the other side. And the effect is super interesting, right? As I, as my players are walking through, they're going to hear this thunder rolling. They're going to see the, the, you know, the lightning flash in the background. Isn't that cool? And I could add more of these tiles, right? I could create more effect. I could, uh, make a storm in the background. I mean, there's so much stuff. I recommend you guys get these and check out what's inside of them. Um, but I'll just give you like a, a hint here. Like if we click into this, we can see we have air effects here. If we back up one, we see earth, energy, fire, ice, lightning, magic, miscellaneous, sci-fi, water. There's so much in here cracks and other things that you can use. And that's just one module, right? We haven't got into JB, JB2A and Jinker, just full, full of really good stuff for you guys to make maps with. I wanted to show you also how to edit some of these things. If we go to foreground tiles, let's say that our tree is blowing too much for the weather that we want, right? So if we go select it and then hit our token magic effects edit, you can see the different um, filters that I have applied. And you can learn a lot just by opening this up and checking out how the filter is set up, right? You can see the different uh, animation and other sets that make this filter work. You can see there's a twist filter. So the first one's distortion. What that does is it makes these leaves sort of distort individually, right? Then twist is what makes the, the macro tile sort of move around like this. Right. And I, I've done all these customizations with twist. And so you can change these values, like take the zero off that. And you can see the twisting cuts down quite a bit. If I increase it, multiply it times 10, the twisting gets even more dramatic, right? The windier I want things to be, I can certainly make that happen. I can even go into the animation and I can speed things up or slow them down, right? So that's the same twisting, but much, much slower. Whereas here's a, loop, a very short loop duration, right? And it looks funny. So you come in here and you play around with these numbers until you have something that you're happy with. Let's say I want this to be less windy, right? And I'll cut this in half, say 1.5 and three. And it just eases the, you know, the, the amount of wind. Now I've went and created this, um, some of these for you, some of these presets, right? So if you uh, go into my nuts and bolts and you search for tree, for example, you'll find all of these leaves, subtle, strong, and stormy. And all they do is just replace what you've got in here. So if I want this to be subtle, I 
click it and now I've got a more subtle blowing. Actually, let me do this. I'll, I'll, there's a, another macro called delete filters on selected that wipes out any filters. And if I execute it again, okay, yeah, there we go. This subtle is just the leaves kind of subtly blowing, right? It's very, very subtle. And I don't, I have it set up in a way that it won't replace the other one. That's why you have to delete it and then go to like stormy. And all of a sudden that's really exaggerated, right? Here's a scene. This is a subterranean uh, part of the ruins that came out in this release. And it has a little bit different um, technique for its background, right? So these parts are the same. This is actually one whole map piece, right? So it's just like one big piece. And then you've got this rotating um, tile behind it. So I go to my background layer and I pull that tile out. You can see it's just a black tile like the other one and it's got this filter applied to it. If I open up the filter, look at the sprite that's being applied to it, go in here to the image path, I can see I have other options here, right? In this case, I happen to be using this gray option, and then it's just colorized, right? So it's colorized to this blue color, and that's what gives me this background. But you'll also notice it's animated. So if I go to animated, you can see it's active, and it's it's got this kind of slow rotation. So let's let's zoom in on it and see if we can see that. Turn the lights up here too. So you can see it slowly rotates, but to your players, they just notice movement, right? So it creates this really calm sort of sense of you know roiling fog underneath the underneath the main. Uh, overhead tile, right? And again, like you saw before, I have the background elevation. In this case, it's just set to minus 10, just because I wanted the background to be 10 feet under where everybody's feet are going to be. But you take that, that rotation and then you add onto it these lights, right? And the lights then uh, frustrate the rotation a little bit. So you get the sense of movement in this direction, but you also get the sense that the, that the fog is roiling in multiple directions. So those two effects together make for a really great effect. And just to show you my settings here, I'm using the light dome setting or light dome animation. And you can see the rest of that here. And then you ultimately want to turn down the lights because you don't want you want to basically design it, the lights, the way you want the lights to look. That's why I like to turn the lights down because I, I like to have the lighting reflect sort of, you know, what I want it to reflect. Put a little background noise on there. Some overhead tiles, right? It's using some of that fancy occlusion that you can use with overhead tiles. We've got, you know, a little tower here that players can climb up to. And this is a just a very effective map. Very flexible. You could see it be used in really any, um, you know, campaign. But it's got this just beautiful animation that when your players are playing it, it just creates all this intrigue, right? Here we've got this temple entrance in an ocean format, right? And we're just using smoke from my uh, premium modules to simulate, you know, ocean spray, right? And I've just had that smoke just kind of pushing out from under the bridge, right? This is what that smoke shape actually looks like. I could have even made the smart where it just fires every once in a while or as players are walking over it. I've got these animated banners, right? With these skeletons kind of hanging from these, these crosses. But this is what, you know, this is what makes your players get really excited when they, when they start playing a, a map like this. Here's the same techniques I used in the other scene. This is sort of the fire version of this, but I did want to show you a different technique that I used here. And this is where you can come into your scene configuration and you can go to the, uh, notice it's negative hundred for the background. If you go to the ambience tab, you can actually pick weather effects, right? Autumn leaves, rain, in this case I chose fog. And you can even have all these FX master effects, so it integrates with those. Let's pick fog, and I have it set to negative one. So that's the height at which that weather effect will happen. And you can see what it does. It gives us this nice, smooth, pretty photorealistic fog effect, right? That's 
core foundry fog effect and it's obscuring what's underneath it. All the moats are underneath there as well. And you notice above the, you know, the bridge, there is no, there's no weather effect. I just wanted to show you that as another option. I think it just looks very, very attractive and you might find um, that you like that sort of look for, for some of your scenes. I mentioned the lights and the walls that can control lights. You can see here, you have this like effect of sort of like, it looks like water sort of slowly falling up, you know, flowing out of this, out of this crevice. Right. Uh, so let me just show you what makes this up. Uh, first of all, there's a light here and this light is being contained by walls. And if we open that light up, we can see the settings for it. It's a pulsing wave set to very low intensity, very low speed. And here's the options we chose for saturation and such, right? You put that inside of some walls and these walls really only do one thing. They only restrict light. Otherwise you can see past them, hear past them and walk past them. And the light just naturally fades out towards the end here. Real simple way of creating just a subtle animation. I could speed this up, of course. Give it more intensity. If I want to give it, you know, make it more obvious that there's something sort of flowing out of there, right? These are all options that you can play around with. So that's it. I hope you guys have fun figuring out, you know, how to design your own maps with all these different kinds of animations and stuff. I think it's super cool. And I, I really like designing maps this way. Um, it just, you know, it's, it's just more engaging for, for my players and, you know, and it's very efficient. A lot of these effects, you don't want to like overdo it, but you saw I had a lot of effects running and it's just super efficient depending on what you're running. You don't want to have too many animated tiles and other things. You just got to keep an eye on that. Watch your frame rates and stuff. But really you can do a lot with these scenes with just a subtle amount of work. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you guys have other ways of creating animations that I didn't cover here. Uh, people really read those comments and it's really helpful to, you know, to get other perspectives on how to do this kind of thing. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this and you enjoy my random uh, beast sounds in the back as I'm navigating our caves. Um, but I have a lot of fun with this and I hope you guys have fun with me too. In the meantime, thanks everybody for all your support for the channel and have fun making your maps.